Okay, guys. Uh, I'll be... <laughs> I don't know what the hell has happened. Ah, uh, freaking gosh. Uh, something happened with the stream. Uh, yo. Uh, okay, I'll be presenting the teams. Uh, uh, we go fly and I'll rest up. So I fucked up. I started this. I started doing everything as correctly, but I didn't start the stream. Sorry, guys. We are live and teams are ready to start. I'll be presenting the teams once we have them uh, uh, taken off. So, countdown for the teams is five, four, three, two, one, go. Round one is live between or match between ETF and SPQR. So, guys, <laughs> for me, I will be. Talking once again about inside all the teams. Uh, oh freaking gosh! Something has really fucked up today. But we're presenting the teams as we have them rolling. So we have SPQR. It stands for Senate and Roman People. Senatus Populus Romanus, which is stands for the Senate and Roman People. They are mainly from the USA, and of course these guys are semi serious squadron with a, with a bunch of guys who want to hone in the skills, not. But they are not a melting type squadron, but a kill team, as they call themselves. Their aim is to provide a fun squad where they can sharpen their, skill, their skills together. ETF, we have on the left, taking off right now. Uh, they are right for a, mainly from Europe, as far as I know, but they have main, they have guys from all over the place. They were formed in 2020 and have experience in Cytal 2020, 2021, TAC 21, TAC 22, and JTAC 2 against 2. Of course, these guys do call themselves a halal crew, <laughs> and they take fun very seriously. So, of course, uh, I'm going to also do a bit of presentation for the guys who, uh, who we have flying today. So, to, for today's match, we have for ET for SPQR side, uh, we have Moose Marauder with the 16 Soul to see for the other side. In currently on the runway, still waiting for takeoff, we have Gopnik Star and Assassin with the 15s. Also, already in the air, we have Praetorian with the 17 and Mac to Mac 24 Grack and Alpha Gator carrying two Tomcats. For their one of, the, one of them is a is a real pilot himself. Therefore, we only be seeing two Tomcats for FPQR side. But of course, same things goes for for good friends from ETF. Which I'm going to do to start presenting them in a few seconds while we have this all sorted out in a sec. So, of course, we have right now taking off the two last members for the SPQR. But first, let me go and present the Focus Friends from ATF. Though I don't have the skins running, I did forget to install them. My bad, my bad, I know, I know. But still, I've been solving that out in the mint uh, for the for, uh, in round two. From from ETF, we have Electro Bull, and in the 17, same as DC, Aspen, and Breeze. Of course, we also have two Tomcats who are Durmouse, with White Rabbit as his Rio, and Riker with Picard as the Rio. So that's the lineup for today. Coxie, welcome, my friend. Welcome on board. We are struggling a bit today to get everything sorted out, but still, we have everything almost, almost up and running. More, more F-15. <laughs> Okay, so of course, let me go and present you the guys who are flying today. I'll start with ETF because I have them already ready on camera. So from the ETF side, let me try. Yeah, I found the folders. In a sec, I freaking. No, this is not the key. No, this is not the key. This is the key. How oh, come on, freaking gosh. So from ETF side, we have right now on camera Aspen being trailed close by by 
Breeze, both carrying the, ET, uh, the JF-17. Of course, that's not all. They are being followed by the one and only, my good, uh, crazy, <laughs> you, crazy British uh, friend, Riker, rocking the 14, together with Picard, as we were mentioning before. Of course, from the other side of ETF, let me present you the other two 17s we are having. In the other side, we have leading the formation who we have on camera. This is the, the one and only girl from ETF formation being followed by Electro Bull up there in the trail. And of course, closing the formation from the ETF side, we have. Durmaus rocking the 714 together with White Rabbit as a real pilot. And of course, ETF had decided to go with a, with a very split formation. You can see that these guys had decided to go with a 27 miles apart formation wide. What? Okay, I was using the wrong key. So these guys are taking quite a spread formation so far. Wait, wait sorry. Oh, freaking gosh. Too many... I've... Rips, Toxy, welcome on board. Yeah, you starting today's fight. I did fuck up a bit today with everything. But still, we are up and running, finally. And all everything is rock and rolling. If my computer wants to roll. Okay, perfect. Now we are working. So now we are going to check SPQR formation. So we have leading the formation on SPQR. We have Alpha Gator, which I think I don't have the Tomcat skins working for so whatever reason. <laughs> Flamingo saying wants to marry Breeze. <laughs> so we have right now on camera Alpha Gator leading the formation from FQQR. Being followed by him by to his left, a bit to the tail to the tail part of him. We have most, the most marauder having the 16 and this beautiful skin for this PQR. Of course, that's not all the old. We have more guys rocking all the beautiful skins. For example, we have Pretorian, where we have now on camera rocking this all this beautiful skin for the 17 with a very nice reflection being there. Of course, that's not all. We also have a closing deformation behind Pretorian. We have the other Tomcat for SPQR, which is Grok, and of course, to the at le utmost left of the formation, we have, let me get this sorted out, we have the Gopnik Star with the 15, and also, in his trail, Assassin also with another 16. Oh, freaking gosh, I didn't change the camera. There you go. So we have... Uh, right now on camera we have Gopnik Star rocking the f 15 airplane going full send full burner and that's not all we also have the other full, the other 15 which is Assassin carrying also right now this beautiful livery Ubernator welcome on board I do I do hope that you do have some fun today in today's match end so guys uh, let us of course let us check the formation from SPQR side. Right now we see that they are, all of them are going quite together. So far we are seeing that the the, the 15s are really pushing hard. Mac 1.3. So these six these 15s really 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 want to push hard these airplanes and get fast as fast as possible as fast as possible and high as possible into the fight. Of course. That's going to be interesting to see if that really pays out for them. Of course, both teams are almost into the combat area. So far we can see that Alpha Gator, Gobnik Star and Assassin are going to be the first one of the SPQR side to join up the fight. ETF had decided to go with a more for a more standard approach for the fight. Carrying uh, the, the 17s, that of course that's not so common to see so far in the tournament, but still we are seeing a more standard approach of them going for two guys on the left, two, three guys on the left, two guys, three guys on the left, on the right, and having the Tomcats on the rear part, they are scoring themselves to be sure. To, so this Phoenix 
do not arrive. Of course, these, these phoenixes tend to be easily noticed, and of course, all the teams usually have the 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 way of proceeding. They do proceed with having the the mandatory notch at 60 miles out. Of course, we can check that it yet did have a notch 53 miles out, as you can see so far. Of course, they will. I'm pretty sure they will be going for another notch around 40 miles out. We'll see how it goes, though. So far, this is proceeding as normal. But now, the SPQR have two less uh, Phoenixes to run with. So of course, guys, as a reminder, I did fuck up with the, with the skins from ETF. I'll be showcasing them afterwards. So bear with me, guys. I'll be solving that out afterwards once I can restart the server. Uh, I can restart my computer. So in Sky it, 1821, welcome, my friend. Welcome aboard. We are just arriving on the nick of time. Uh, we are seeing the first Phoenix arriving to the arriving to the combat area but still as mentioned that phoenix is not tracking really it's not going to be a problem at, problem at all it's just going on top of everyone so of course SPQR are, are really push, pushing hard with the armbrands it does seem to me that they are trying to take ETF out of this fight as fast as possible as soon as possible but so far SPQR have launched four missiles five missiles on total so these guys are really pushing hard I'm very pleased to know if this is going to be paying out for them. But this is not the best position to be so far. When you have, when you are inserting the fight and you are already five missiles out from three. So they, oh sorry, they really have to put those missiles into good use. And we'll see if it really pays out. You are seeing right now on camera Electro Bull going prank. This he might take the kill. Let me try to arrive right with her so this is right now on camera outrunning the s the 120 sent by the by the 215s were going very high very fast of course but of course right now we have more finishes coming to the left side of the etf side but still i don't think that's going to be any problem whatsoever so far it does seem to me that spqr are deciding now to go with a they are taking now they are going to start going more slowly you can see that this phoenix is not going to even connect so far you can see it's not tracking at all so phoenix are not tracking so those uh i think it was six missiles in total from uh, from spqr have not killed anyone else in this starting fight so really it's not paid that much out uh now we have ETF starting to send down range some missiles. We can see that both Riker and Aspen are putting sd 10s down range, trying to take them, trying to push the level of things out here. As now we are seeing that FQR has decided to go and regroup over the southern area of the fight, which is on left of the camera. And now we have members from ETF quite already. We have Durmouse, Electro Bull, and this year are way to fight the fight right now. So we have we'll be seeing if Retorian. Most Marauder, Assassin, and Gopni have enough ace bait to get into this area, the southern area, and put pressure into ETF. We'll see, we'll see. But of course, let us ride with Brack, the, the Tomcat from, from SPQR, as he's going to be defending right now the, the Phoenix can send his way. Of course, many missiles are coming into ETF side, and we might have a, a casualty here. We might. See that Breeze and Aspen are still alive. Up and down the... So, so far, no casualties. You can see, uh, we've seen, of course, Iraq is also still alive. So, it's saying that they are pushing hard, but so far, no casualties. But still, let me ride with... Okay, we have Gomnik Stars sending a fast... Uh, Mac 2 120s toward Breeze. Let me ride with Breeze on camera. If I can. If I can, this is my keyboard. Uh, okay. Breeze on camera right now, going for defensive maneuvering vertically. Of course, now we are seeing that Breeze is wiggling the airplane, trying to out outrun the enemy missile. Of course, Alpha Gator is also defending. Okay, Breeze is down. I read Breeze is down. We have the first casualty of the fight. 
ETF is down one guy. So now we have a very tight situation here on the on the northern side of the fight, where we have missiles coming down up and up and running everywhere. Sorry, because DC might get killed here. Let me try and see if we can ride with her. That's not DC, I'm afraid. But still, so far. Okay, we have a casualty right here, this area. I don't know who it is, though. Okay, this is hard to cover, because now we have to... Who is that? Durmaus. Durmaus is dead. So, ETF are taking casualties left and right. So, right now, ETF is down two guys. So, now they are down to four pilots. Aspen, Picard, Aspen, Riker, DC, and Natural Bull. So it's not been a, a good start for sure for, ET, for ETF this first round. Of course, the 15s are really pushing hard. We've seen that in the right corner. Gopnik start pushing hard into Electro Bull. And he's been taking care of the commission by Electro Bull. So now we have a 4 on 4. We miss a more, a one more casualty from the SPPR side. Sadly, I don't know who, but we'll check afterwards. So now we are having SPQR, Praetorian, facing and Reptable. And then up there, we can see that he's just trying to outrun the missile that he, he assumed he's been sent his way. And we can see Electrable has answered as he then sent his way. Electrable managed to defend the missile. A very close missile. Of course, now we have a Marauder over there. But that's not all. We have more Phoenix coming downrange from the Tomcat. We have Riker sending a uh, Phoenix downrange. We'll see if it goes. Let me try to drive with Musma Router. Musma Router is taken out of commission of the sky. Well, now we, now we have a 4-on-4 four four situation. Riker, who we have right now on camera, is trying to defend a Phoenix sent his way. This Phoenix sends his way. He might get able to outrun the missile, but still. So far, this is also trying to outrun uh, at 120, send it her way. She is going to run it out. But really, this one, this one is going fast. Like, going down really fast. You can see Alpha Gator is really out of the fight. Praetorian turning it hot. Wait, we are missing one more from each SPQR. What the heck is going on today? It, this is going really fast really down very fast though i am surprised i cannot even keep up with everything everything out so praetorian sd10 towards Riker, but of course aspen coming in answer with another sd10 towards praetorian praetorian also another sd10 towards aspen that's at seven miles out of shot and that's going to be a very tight one i do know that someone is going to be dying here i don't know if it's going to be praetorian or aspen Okay, a Praetorian takes a kill. Aspen still. Trying to around the SD10. Let me ride with Grok with the SPQR Tomcat we have right now on camera. He's up in the air. And he's going to be arriving to the combat area. Wait, we have one more casualty for ETF. Aspen is down. Aspen is down. I missed the kill, but we will see that on time view. So we can see that DC and Grok are very close by. DC send an SD10 towards Grok. Grok going vertically maneuvering, trying to defend. But still, that's going to connect for sure. That's a kill, and DC takes the kill. Now we have a two on one against Alpha Gator. Alpha Gator carrying the old other Tomcat from SPQR side. It's also rival for SPQR. <coughs> He's going to have to be toward double time. If he wants to be to bring victory home in this round one but of course now we have on the left camera we have Riker together with Picard trying to get into wait what come on where what the fuck I think you are still <laughs> when I did not notice the kill there like freaking wow <laughs> So guys, this is going to this is going to mean that ETF now has to land, and then they will be declaring the their victory today. So now we have on camera Riker and Picard carrying one single Phoenix and two heaters. 
And now, of course, the other survivor from ETF side, we have DC carrying still two hitters and the smoke pot. <laughs> DC always loves her little smoke pot for sure. So guys, give me a sec. I'm going to be reviewing the tag view, but of course, I'm going to first bef before that. Give me a sec. While I get, I sort out a bit of a problem I have with the skins with the both teams. So I'm going to be restarting the server, my my DCS, while we wait for the teams to arrive on the on combat place, and I and will be checking out the what has been going on in this round. So of course, as we mentioned, uh, so far, both tactics were very different. ETF were having a 3-3 three, three, three situation. FQR having the, the 15s coming in hot as fast as possible, trying up high, sending Phoenix down range. So we can see that really, it, SPQR has put missiles down range. Oh, sorry, that's not there. It has put missiles down range very fast from the start, and thus afterwards, Okay, of course they put a bit of pressure into it here but not enough to make them crumble we can see that uh, aspen and this here they have enough airspace to, to so these two tomcat really didn't put any pressure whatsoever so far so they could really up uh, get up in, up close into the fight so we can see that up here no casualties so far first casualty was freeze i do know i do recall that 120 cent but assassin at Mach 2, I think that was the kill for Breeze. That's it. So this is a very interesting one. Because you can see guys that Assassin come here comes at Mach 2. And that's not I just 37. So this high and this fast is amazing. That's something that we are not used to see so far in this kind of tournaments. And you can see that that way the 120 does reach. Of course, Breeze sent an SD10 toward the Phoenix from Alpha Gator and sadly made, does, uh, takes the Phoenix kill, but still doesn't make him survive. If I recall correctly, the next casualty is in this northern area. So let me check. Because we saw that here we have a quite a horrible of missiles coming down range. Okay, we can see that Assassin here coming now to the northern area after the encounter in the southern area just coming in here fox 3 goes but that one is going toward door mouse and but here assassin got killed by dc with an sd10 of course that's the problem when you do not uh, take care of the elements that are closer to you you're taking out the scar yeah of course this missile conservation is a big thing more so in this tournament where where you have only four Fox 3 missiles. And of course, even though that Assassin was taken out of the sky. Sorry, that. So we can see that even though he was taken out of the sky, that 50 miles out, Fox 3 at Mach 2.1 is not to what Durmouse managed to take him out of the sky. So, of course, that's not all. Let me double check here because I think that we are missing that Breeze. First casualty is Breeze. Riker misses the, the Phoenix. Yeah, so I think the next assault is over here. With this northern area really went down very fast. So we can see that so far Durmouse was killed here. Now it was Gopnik Star who was very high, very fast, very close. And of course that makes that means that he doesn't doesn't have any kind of information regarding the enemy positioning and thus cannot help himself down that situation. Victorian almost take air support out of the sky and now we can see that ETF are coming into this area try to push hard into the SPQR lines uh, the most power the Dex is taking out of the sky but Aspen there and of course because they've turned into the northern area that means that as the both Grab and Alpha Gator have enough airspace to really come back here yo Mocha happy to see you on board my friend I think what's electrical that can it? Yes. So Praetorian here. Let me try to get this close to here. Praetorian here with a seven miles out shot. Aerosol notice it a bit too late, try to defend, but still takes the hit. And of course, we mentioned ETF is being pushed hard into the northern area because they did come here to help the group on the northern side. And Praetorian here 
putting SD10 towards Riker, putting, giving himself a bit of Ace Spade, but still, Aspen managed to take him down. And now Aspen takes take, take him down out of the grave? Yeah. So, out from the grave, he's been taken care of by our good friends. So, right now, DC uh, carrying SD10 into Brack, very close one. And now we can see that uh, Fox 2, but still not tracking, sadly. And um, something happened here. Alpha Gator did crash into the ground. Either he ran, he ran out of fuel, something did happen. I don't know which happened really there. So guys, uh, give me a few moments while we, while I sort out a few issues with the skins that I have today, sadly. Of course, as per usual, as per usual, not really as per usual though. But still, as uh, I did today, let me try to do one thing. It's going to be easier for you. So of course, let me try to get this on camera. So at least you have something to watch, okay? So now we are having the ETF formation coming in into, into landing. Over, I don't remember their, their report. Sochi Adler. So we'll be seeing them landing there soon enough. So bear with me while I get sorted out the skins for today's match. Something has been wrongly sold for my side. And thus, uh, no skins from ETF. And some problem also with the skin for the Tomcat from SPQR, which I'm going to be checking right now as we speak. So of course, today has been a very accidental uh, set of fights for my side. <laughs> okay, now I found why it's not correctly sold the SPQR one. The SPQR is sold. Got the the freaking gosh. SPQR, SPQR. Okay, there you go. So the folders were given us in another correct manner for the SPQR side and for NTF I did forget to install them entirely myself. So yeah. <laughs> oh freaking gosh. I thought I did thought that our fight today was at uh, 18 Zulu, not no, sorry, 20 Zulu, not uh, 18 Zulu. So, yeah, I'm fixing a few things my sides right now, as we speak. Oh, freaking gosh, freaking gosh, freaking gosh. So, ETF skins are almost ready. It's Shani Carp, welcome, our friend, on board. We are just, you are just arriving as we have ETF coming back into the, into the friendly airbase. Of course, we'll be checking the, this, the DCS once again, once I have the skin installed, <laughs> once again. So bear with me for a second while I sort out the problems. Oh, freaking gosh. Still, uh, we'll be able now to check in round, this round two, we'll be able to really check the skins from ETF and the full team from SPQR, which we did not, be, we were not able to check out. So let me finish installing these skins here. Well, we have a beautiful formation between Riker and DC, the two survivors. We are missing one. Yes, we are missing one on the plane. So we have two survivors from ETF coming back home. So skins are installed. Perfect. Now skins are installed and I'm going to restart DCS. So sorry for the problem, guys. And sorry for not having the beautiful airplanes being shown. But it seems that we are going to be able to showcase a bit the skins from ETF while we have them uh, landing. But of course, let me also use this opportunity to ask you guys a, a poll and know who do you think will win? Who will win? Yeah. So guys, now you have a poll where you can answer and say what you, who you think will win. Will it be SPQR or will it be ETF? Of course, tactics being employed by both teams are very different. So far, we've seen that ETF are carrying the more standard approach, going for the notch, 60 miles out notch, 40 miles out notch, really waiting, making them making them enemy miss, expecting to receive the Phoenixes as it has happened for, for them in this round one. And let's speak you are carrying a very, a very, very aggressive uh, match today. So far, we've seen that they are starting sending missiles down range uh, from the start with some cats. Uh, more interestingly, which I do really like seeing, uh, the 15s coming in hot, Mac 2 sending 120s down range, which is 
nuts. It's really nuts. I do love seeing something that unexpected. Uh, I do I do know for sure that not many things do carry uh, other airplanes, such as the 15. Well, we have the 51st uh, Kiap, 51st PVO, and other Kiap. What are the organizers of this tournament to, that we are enjoying today? Of course, massive thanks for them to hosting all the events and getting uh, being sure that we all can enjoy these magnificent fights. Of course, guys. That's not only all. We also have to say many thanks to the sponsors, which are DC. We are Eagle Dynamics. We have also a uh, Rasban. We have Magnitude Three. We have a uh, Headblue. Rathman, Headroom, Magnitude 3, Eagle Dynamics, Tagview itself also is a sponsor, and the and Lot ATC, which will we will be enjoying episode once we get into the bracket stage of the tournament. So so far, things are rocking. The are still rocking. Okay, sorry, I, I was checking a, a, thing, a, a thing on my side. So, who are also... The uh, LTTC will be used in the bracket stage once we do not have any... any AWACS whatsoever. So, so far we do have AWACS in these fights. Thus, from, teams do not have to rely on human interaction to really tell them who's who, or where's where. That's one thing that we'll be seeing ourselves once we get into the bracket stage. And I think it's going to be a pretty interesting one. But really, these two teams that we are having today fight, both ETF and SPQR, uh, really, personally, I think that they are two of the top most contenders to win here, apart from, of course, 51st. They're going to the tournament. So I'm very curious to see how it's going to be played out. So far, we did mention, we did set today, we did see today. Really, these two teams, SPQR and ETF, are still without any loss whatsoever in the tournament. So they are really, really, really carrying very well so far themselves out. But yeah, 17 is a very good airplane. And re really, personally, 16 is a better airplane because it's more maneuverable, it's faster. Of course, as, uh, the DF-17 is a very good uh, one-turn fighter, like a uh, better than 18, by the way, just in case you didn't know. But of course, that's not all. The SD-10, the SD-10 missile is way, 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 way better than the 120, and that's a huge difference compared to to before. So that's why we are seeing uh, more 17s being used around the tournament. But guys, I have I'm a bringer of the good news today. If my computer doesn't crash. The computer is dragging a bit. Okay, there you go. So now we have skins. His skins are alive. Oh, freaking gosh. Now we have the ETF for the 17 and the uh, ETF for the Tomcat. Now we have skins. Finally. Finally. Oh, freaking gosh. Chinese ripoff. <laughs> Come on. Don't be, don't be hard. Let me try to solve this little issue here, 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 okay. So of course, as mandatory, we have... Uh, now we have a DC carrying the smoke pot, celebrating that they are going to be landing. Always, always, I, all the tournaments I've seen DC flying around, all the times I've seen her carrying the smoke pot to, ce to celebrate the victory when they win a round. It's, it's really amazing for me. That, like, really amazing. Yeah, sec, well, I fix a few things out my side. Two, two, two. Okay, here, here, here. So now, of course, we are seeing the final approach on ETF. Just in case you haven't noticed, weather is not nice at all. So that's why we are seeing this beauty, this, this long, long, long approach. Like, really long approaches. But still, that's what you have to see in order to have this work out. Uh, sorry, that's not it. Uh, uh, okay, there you go. 
so uh, let me try to just for you to know so i'm going to show you this is the viewpoint from the runway towards the smoke trail that we see so you can see that there is nothing to be seen whatsoever so of course that, that's why we are seeing these long ass approaches to get down in the in the ground as safe as possible because really this could be a this could be a, a hard ap approach for any for a group of friends from ETF if they do not manage manage it correctly. So now we have on camera both of them easy leading the, fl the flight right now. Both Riker, <laughs> my <laughs> my crazy my crazy <laughs> UK friend, yeah, living in the zone in Spain. So now we have right now on final approach we have easy being followed by Riker, and once they have them on the ground. They will, we will be declaring the victory for, for ETF on this round one. But of course, it seems that the poll for you guys, you do think that SPQR is going to be winning this fight between uh, ETF and SPQR even if they lost round one. So I'm very curious to know more of, you, more of your opinion, guys. You still have a few minutes to to get to, uh, to comment in the poll that we are running right now on the stream. So of course, guys, now we have Please do not crash. Do not crash. Okay, no crashes. So it's seen that so far so good. Right, of course, remember now we do have wind uh, wind wind, sorry. And we do have crosswind in this la or this landing. So landing is not as easy as usually you have seen. But nevertheless, now we have uh, ETF down in the round and under control. And therefore, we will be declaring the victory for ETF in this round one, this fight between ETF and SPQR. So, guys, we are going to be restarting the server. I will be back. We'll be back once we, the teams are ready for round two. So, stay tuned and don't go far away.
you guys. Sorry for the delay. We had a bit of a hiccup with the server. <laughs> Nevertheless, it's being solved right now. And we are rejoining the server. Because, as per usual, when you are doing things, uh, sometimes problems are do arise. But still, SPQR has very fast solved the issue with the server. Small issues, nothing to be worried about. And it's solved and ready. So now we, ha we are rejoining the server. I will be seeing the teams getting ready to taxi in a few moments. And of course, this time, this time for reals. For reals, we have the skins of the teams. So I will not be show showcasing the same Tomcat for all both teams. I'll be showcasing the correct Tomcat skin for each team this time. So, of course, let me try to get everything sorted out. We are just waiting for one of my two DCS to join the server. Now, the other one I have it already ready for the for to start the fight. Okay, this is almost ready. There, there, there. There. And um, we should go to the old team. So guys, what are your thoughts on round one? We've seen that round one was a very hectic one for sure. And I'm pretty sure one more than one of you do have something to say about it. I mean, it was a very hectic one, a very interesting one to, to boot. And I'm very curious to see how round two is going to be played out. Because really, it can be played out mostly the same. But still, that's something we'll be showcasing and knowing in a few moments. So let me try to solve this out. Okay, this is working. This is working. Okay, guys. No, now we can go live finally. Sorry for the problems, guys. A few hiccups here and there. Now we are running for this round two between ETF and SPQR. So both teams are starting to roll in. ETF's taking a bit more time, as we can see. So of course. We can see that SPQR are rolling once again with these beautiful skins for the 15s. And we will be able to really check out this time also the skins for the Tomcat that we were not able to see before. We can see also on the left screen we have already the ETF team also starting to, to taxi. So we will be seeing... Oh freaking gosh, I forgot to do uh, this. Not this, I have to do, do this combination of keys. There you go. So now we have ETF also starting to, to rock and roll. Rocking these, the 17s. Now, so far we've seen that they do know how to really use them. Put them into a good use. And I'm very curious to see if they will be able to keep on working as well as in round one with the 17s and that's something we'll be seeing in just a few moments of course of course we can see that already SP, uh, SPQR are reaching the end of the taxiway so far and S uh, S ETF is starting to taxi so we'll be seeing both teams getting ready to take off in just a few moments of course so guys it sounds to me that you do think that SPQR will be the one winning this round too of course, I do know that SPQR has a lot of, is a team with a lot of experience and can and will uh, come back from the from the loss in round one. And I'm pretty sure they are going to showcase this round two and, and bring a very interesting round to boot for sure. For us, all of us to enjoy up here. So then let's start to showcase a bit of sound, shall we? So there is not only the rain that we have today in today's fight, the sole essence of this fight. Okay, let me try to. Today, I'm struggling a bit today with the camera work because I've changed a uh, keyboard uh, to something uh, to a 60% keyboard, something smaller, which is takes less space on the on, on the on the desk Mac for sure but still makes life a bit harder 
to get the cameras ready when you don't have F1, F2, etc., etc. at hand and you have to do a few key presses here and there to really be able to use them. But still, I do think that's it seems that I'm getting used to as we speak, so it should not be a problem. But we can use this opportunity to showcase a bit the skins on ETF side while, while we wait for them to, to line up on the runway. So of course we have someone flashing his lights. <laughs> DC, you have to wait. I'm afraid DC, no lights being shown here will make him take off faster. You have to wait. Be patient, my, my I, where, I do not recall was forget. Last time we did talk about where from what part of the USA this uh, banner was, Texas, if I recall correctly. I do not always recall. But still, let me try to do this for a sec. Yes, it's going to be easier. So, of course, now we have on camera. And this is going to, going to be easier. We have ETF on camera, rocking the, this beautiful skin for 17. And of course, the Tomcat. Oh, by the way, each uh, 17 has the, the pilot number of one of the, each one of them. And, and some of them even have a bit, a little bit extra. Of course, for example, now, now we have Aspen, the other American, carrying the Californian. Excuses, excuses. I know, I know, man, I know, I know. My bad. <laughs> but still, bear with me, bear with me. Of oh, course, Breeze. The Pakistani friend carrying the Pakistani, Pakistani airplane, as it should be done. And also the Tomcats from ETF. Now, who we have right now, we have Durmouse and White Rabbit. The Queen of Hearts being carried into fight today. And of course, the other the Tomcats, it being Riker and Peacock with this beautiful Futomcat livery. <laughs> 1821 saying, get out of my way, come on. <laughs> okay, that seems to me that things are ready. Let me double check, just to be sure. Okay. Okay, ETF is ready. So we are going for a countdown. Uh, so guys, look, 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 camera, camera. So five, four, three, two, one, go! Round two is alive, gents. ETF against SPQR. Of course, we will be checking the skins from SPQR in a bit more detail once again afterwards, after I solve my, my little screw up <laughs> over there. So, of course, for all you who doesn't know, Teams do have to carry the same airplane configuration as in, for example, the SPQR is are carrying two Tomcats, uh, 116, 117, and 215. So that's what they are carrying, and they have to keep on it. And of course, from the SPQR, from ETF side, they are carrying four 17s and two for Tomcats, and they do have to still carry it out for the rest of the turn of the fight for today. Of course, we've seen that the, these two 15s that we have on runway from SP Grass side, they really did a good, uh, put a very good fight on the start of the fight round one. And then very, I really wanted to see them put into very good use this, this time. I do know that they can, and I'm pretty sure they will. But still, there's something I want to see for myself. If they will be uh, showcasing the raw velocity that these F-15s can and will put into the uh, into the Phoenixes, into the 120s for sure. So guys, while we wait for the for the last two members from SPQR to take off, let me try to do uh, once again a bit of presentation. Wait, wait. Okay, just for you to know, okay? Things do happen. You can see that SD-10 sent by Breeze is seeing that he doesn't need any more missiles, but well, things do happen. <laughs> Still, let me get camera ready. We have on camera right now Aspen rocking the 17, being followed very closely by Breeze, and we can see. Also, on the rear part of the ETF formation, we are seeing the. Let me get him on camera. My crazy, my crazy UK friend. 
can see Riker with the Tomcat together with Picard. You can see that the cloud coverage is really, really thick and it's not easy when once we are down into the ground and down below. So cool, that's for the right side from ETF, but still that's not all. Let us go with the left side from the ETF where we have right now on camera Electro Bull. And to his right we have our favorite American girl. DC herself rocking the other 17, of course, as it should be. Of course, that's not all. Those in the formation from the ETF side, we have Durmaus with the Queen of Hearts taking up in the air as fast as possible to get into position. So, so far we've seen Okay guys, sorry, uh, my computer did have a big hiccup for whatever reason. Uh, <laughs> so guys, sorry for the problems, the stream is back alive, uh, for whatever reason it did crash, but still, we are back online, uh, once again, sorry. But Sorry for the inconvenience. It does seem that I need a better computer myself to re really be able to keep this up and running. <laughs> Only two more screens, my beautiful computer, as Kijel well says. <laughs> Only two more screens. <laughs> two more weeks and you're done. Nevertheless, let us now go to present a good friend from, S from SQQR, because this time we can showcase the beautiful skins for the Tomcats for sure. So now we have on camera <laughs> the freaking mind. <laughs> always, always showcasing my beautiful things of victories once we take out of the sky my enemies. <laughs> now we have on camera SPQR, the DS player with the Tomcat leading the formation from, ET, from SPQR. Of course, he's been followed by, to his, to his right, by. Uh, the most my router, the Soul 16 from SPQR formation. But of course, that's not all. We also have Pretorian, who is a bit, a, a bit more in, down below, and of course, everything works. Yeah. So of course we have Red Sorry, I'm sorry once again for the for the problem for the stream. My computer did have a bit of a hiccup there, but still we are back online. We are back alive. So we are missing all the Tonka twists. Rack, seeing that Rack has to go, did have to go RTB. We'll check it, him out afterwards. But of course, one even more important. I want to see these beautiful 15s, which are seen right now. We have on camera Gopnik being followed by Assassin. And you have camera Gopnik carrying the 15 and of course the other 15 who is assassin so we have both 15s who are being taking part of today's fight this beautiful skin artwork made by this team i do really appreciate a good work put into into good use so i do want to see these 15s eagles really pushing hard and really making them proud of the of the skin that they are carrying today. 
and of course that's not all. We have also Brack, uh, Gra no sorry, Brack, Brack, no, not Brack. Brack, it's, it's it's very hard to pronounce Brack. Gag, uh, Greg Karin, this beautiful scheme for the Tomcat, and now we can showcase once again. In Sky 1821, yes, please. Uh, of course, good skins do have do come a long way. Of course, you can check. I cannot zoom up. Can you can see that this eagle, the back area, has a treatment to be sure that has a correct reflection compared to the rest of the skin and therefore it stands out even more. So these guys do take lots of attention and care for these skins. And that's something that I can really appreciate for sure when we are doing this kind of matches because it does show that these teams know that they are going to be streamed. They want to look good at both on the tactics part and both um, in the looks part, which is something beautiful to really see. And of course, let us check uh, the formation from SP Grass. So far, we can see that uh, Brack will have on camera is way after, way, way, way away. But still, the rest of the SP Grass formation is way closer than before. And they are taking closer and closer to 73 miles out from ETF. So, guys, let me try to get cameras ready for the start of the fight. This should do. Okay, so now we are rolling. So now, let me go with... Now we have on camera... Yes, I do have a with sound? Okay, no, sorry. So ATF is going over Mac 1, we can see. So now we have on camera Aspen and Breeze, who are going over Mac 1, getting closer and closer to the fight. It's not a eagle, it's a big game. <laughs> And now, once again, they are going for the, the preemptive notch. As before, uh, we they are expecting the Tomcats from SP Grass, Send and Rent the Phoenixes. And of course, they did. We can see that the DS player this time Send and Rent 1S10. So, one, uh, one Phoenix out. Of course, teams do tend to notch around 60 miles out and 40 miles out, usually. Between those two ranges, that's when the teams usually go for the first notch. And we can see that the entire formation from ETF, the entire formation is going for the notch situation right here. Of course, that's going to uh, make the make SP Croix lose one missile from the start of the fight. So that so far so good. Now we see that also. Let me try to get some camera. Gopnik Star with the 15s that they are as before. They are getting ready to really pummel down that throttle. Over Mac 2, right now we are have them. Over Mac 2, coming into the fight, getting closer to ETF formation, trying to get sure that they can put missiles downrange into ETF lines once they commit into health formation. Once again, as they are doing right now, I do expect a something like Gopnik turning out towards ETF formation very hard, very fast, and then putting lots of pressure. Of course, the 15s. Because they are carrying such a high, high airspeed, they have a very good opportunity now to start the fight in, the, in, in a very good spot. Of course, that Phoenix is not tracking, you can see it's way higher, not tracking anyone else. So even if in back 4, it's not going to be any problem whatsoever. Of course, I'm going to double check just to be sure in case that one goes to Dual Mouse. Because, wait, wait, guys. He's tracking. Durmouse is for a, for a wall of pain if he doesn't notice and, no, and notches. Durmouse going for defensive maneuvering. And... Oh, freaking gosh! No! No freaking way! Have you seen that one? Like, how freaking far that was! Oh my freaking gosh! I need to check. I need to check. That... No way! That's a 85 miles out shot. Oh freaking gosh! No way, guys! What a way to start round 2 for sure. For SPQR. Now they are coming back harder than... 
just saving their missiles and are coming harder. And we can see that ATF now have to put more missiles into into play if they want to level things out. They are running with six missiles left, so six less missiles compared to before. Of course, since the south of, having that since the south of fight, that's huge, like really huge. Of course, we are seeing right now we have Wiz right now going defensive. He's the one pushing hot from the any for the ETS side. You can see he's just going defensive, wiggling a bit around, trying to out out maneuver the missiles as they are coming towards him. I was missing a bit of detail here. Okay, there you go. So Breeze is still alive. You can see missiles coming down way from DC and also from Aspen towards the SPQR formation. SP uh, Gobnik starts sending a 120 towards Aspen. Aspen, who we have on camera right now, defensively, maneuvering defensively vertically, trying to outrun the F120. Okay, so so far Aspen is trying to run the 120. 120 still have legs, and that's a kill. Oh wow! So ETF are down to four guys since the start. So now we have four guys from ETF, and and SPQR one two, one two three. Wait 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 wait! I'm missing guys from SPQR. I'm missing people. One, two, three, four, five. So we are missing one guy from no, and Grab is coming uh, later on. So uh, SPQR team is already still entire team still at play, and uh, ETF is down to four guys. So they are taking a pummel in this round for sure. They they are going to be struggling this round if they do not come up with something. Of course, ETF do have a lot of experience, do know what they are doing, and if and I do know that this is going to be a very interesting fight. And this turn, this fight is one of those that is going to be very interesting to see if we go for round three. So now we have Breeze and and Moose Marauder exchanging missiles. You can see this very close. Let me try to see if I can ride with Breeze because it's the one who has the missile closer by. Breeze going for the ground, trying to defend missiles and manage to put the missile onto the ground and now getting up in the earth. SD10 sent by we are running with Breeze yeah we are running with Breeze here from Breeze towards Assassin and Assassin managed to defend uh, BL2 sorry BL2 Breeze right now is going to be defending also Nessie 10, 10 sent his way and managed to defend that one very closely freaking gosh this is going hard and this is going very fast and very hard I, that's how I love it that's how I love it so of course Phoenix towards Electro Bull and 120 to Electro Bull still managed to defend the 120. Uh, Phoenix coming his way, but still that one still have a bit of legs that should not be a problem. Let me try to sort out where to look at because we have many things going at once as you can see. Let me ride with Breeze once again. Breeze who we have still on camera. Still on camera climbing, getting closer, close to popping up flares. Nothing to be seen here. You can see, okay, takes the kill. It, Breeze has managed to take down one of the enemy members. So now things are more leveled out. We have a four on one, two, three, four, five. We have a four on four situation. Grab coming in hot. Assassin still alive. Goblin Star still alive. Praetorian still alive. So we have a four on four, guys. Things are getting leveled out, as we can see. So of course, uh, Breeze is also defending one second, defending at 120 from Goblin Star. Let me try to rack over here on camera. It's very, very high and takes the SD10, sadly. Still, Riker might take the kill there. Riker seems to be surviving the, the Phoenix. Okay, managed to survive the Phoenix. So now we have a 4 on 3 in favor of ETF. With these guys are coming back from being at 6 against 4. They are coming back here and they, they level things out. Like, Freaking wow for sure guys. That's huge. That's huge for sure. What a round. What a freaking round. So now we have from camera we have Breeze going low low and very fast trying to 
Praetorian sending out a SD10 towards his way. Chris is going for defensive maneuvering here. We can see. Okay, wait. Assassin here might take the kill. Okay, Assassin is taken out of commission by that SD10. Because he did try to, fox, to do a fox run over there, but still did not manage to reach as he had to guide it out and no tracking whatsoever. So now we have the only survivor from this PQR, uh, got the Gopnik star, who we have on camera. Right now he's Angel 38, Fox 3 into DC. So he really... No music whatsoever? Okay, music is on. So DC right now, you can see that... Gobnik Star is very high, very fast. That 120 might connect into DC. DC, DC, DC takes the kill. DC is down. I repeat, DC is down. Now we have a one on three. Of course, we have another casualty from the secure side over there. Oh freaking gosh! These 15s are really taking, putting a half time onto ETF. Oh freaking gosh! Gobnik Star taking down one more member from ETF. Right now, Breeze and Gobnik Star are getting into a melee fight over there. Angel 13, as we can see right now. Let me try to ride with Breeze on left camera. Let me try to ride with... Okay, here we go. So Breeze is on, the, on his tail. He's in a good position to take the kill. Going down to Gowns, so as we can see. Picard is coming into play. Pick up with a Fox 2. Will he take out the Gopnik Star? And takes the Gopnik Star out of the equation. Wow! Guys, of course, uh, round one was won by TF, ETF, by the way. So, but, guys, what a freaking round! Like, come on! How can I one of you be pumped out for this beautiful fight we've seen this round two? It's amazing! This is the kind of fights I love seeing, and this is the kind of tournaments I am loving, like really loving to be a caster for. Oh freaking gosh, and yes, what a clutch from ETF. Oh, I, I'm almost trembling here, you know. My hair is standing up in my, in my, in my arms. Because what has going on this round? What a roller coaster of emotions! Like freaking wow! So now we have on camera Riker carrying nothing at all. So Riker took the kill with the last Fox 2 missile. Oh freaking gosh! But not only for him, but the last two, the last Fox 2 missile for the entire team. So the last missile from ETF took the victory here. Oh freaking gosh, guys! What a round! What a freaking round for sure! Oh, of course, I don't think that's not going to be any problem for ETF to really go back home and land and such. We can see that Breeze is burning to fuel without any care of the world, so that should be not a problem. But still, let us go and check the tab view so we know what has gone on in this round too, because it's at it's been very hectic and very chaotic for sure impressive work today but let me also check the teams and check if they are up for interview interview you up for an interview yes it's asking the team if they are up for interview while we wait for the etf site to land so of course there we go so of course let us go and check the tab view as we know uh once again, SPQR decided to go with the 15s high and fast, which is a so far. I'm very amazed to see this one, this tactic being employed. It's been it's working way better than I expected so far, and that's something I do love seeing. But of course, the most important shot of the of this fight, I think we all can agree, is this Phoenix send down range by DS player. Like, guys, that's a 80 mile. Let me let me measure it once again, okay? Because that one is a... It was to draw mouse. Sorry, it was even more? 87? 87, 87 miles out? No, no way. No way. Of course, we can see the SDS player was at Angels 47 Mark 1. 
like freaking wow that's huge altitude high energy and of course Durmaus 87 86.8 miles out guys <laughs> what a lot of shot wow so of course this is the first casualty of the fight and you can see that even Durmaus was there going for the notch and this player was going for the this player went for the crank and Durmaus went for the notch and even with that that missile did not lose a track whatsoever. That's something I was not expecting to see. And of course, let me see the terminal velocity of this, this freaking Phoenix. You can see that this Phoenix still is running at 3, ma 3 Mach, Mach 3, coming in hot into Durmaus at 2.5 Mach. So this missile, it, you cannot outrun it. For real, that's something you know for sure that you cannot outrun. There's no way you are going to outrun that missile anytime soon. So of course, let's just keep on moving forward. You can see that ETF now decided to push a bit more with the, with the missiles out. And now we saw that the four roll was created over the side. Breeze here was wiggling his wings, trying to get those missiles out of his way. Of course, Gopnik Star, I think it was, it was the next casualty here. Yes. So we can see here that Gopnik Star. Let me here. No. Here. Okay. There you go. Still getting used to my new keyboard and sometimes I'm struggling a bit. So we can see that from Gopnik Star, 38 miles south, Mach 1.9, 60 miles south. 15 miles out, sorry. Fox 3 into Aspen. Aspen, Fox 3 into Assassin. No, not into Assassin. Who is he shooting to? Praetorian. Uh, Aspen is shooting towards Praetorian. I was called Gopnik Star. Having that much energy into the airplane, do have enough energy to what 120 to carry over and connect there. So, of course, let, me, let us check. Who's the next casualty of this fight? Because you can see this fight is very hectic. So far, we can see that Breeze really has hold out in the middle area, defending missiles left and right. You can see here. He's really been pushing hard, trying to base enemy missiles out of the enemy airplanes. So, of course, you can see that Phoenix, of course, when they are sent closer to the ground, they don't have enough legs. They do drain too much energy. You can see Breeze here also send, defending this 120 from uh, here defending a eight nine miles out fox 3 from the most marauder who was very, way higher way faster and breeze using the ground clutter and wiggling about the airplane to defend that missile out and of course that's a missed the opportunity to put a fox 2 into assassin which doesn't connect and defends another more missile here. So you can see that Breeze do ha have a lot of. Com he feels com himself very comfortably. He says he is very comfortable defending missiles where uh, almost no one is putting missiles out of the sky, leveling things out for his team for sure. You can see the Electro Bull defending 120 there should not be a problem. It's like as I did recall. Let me also check what, who is more is going to be dying today in this part. You can see that really oh, freaking gosh. You can see here. It's so freaking tight. I mean, that's a... Just for, for, no, okay, just for you to know, guys. Two miles out, Fox 2. And 2.6 mi miles out, Fox 3. Okay, guys? Is there anything else I have to tell you guys? Breeze was still alive out of sheer luck. There is no other way. 120 did track the PL5. Did not track the airplane. It is because of that many chaff and flares? Maybe. I do not know. But still, it did track the PL PL2. Even though, even better, it does miss the PL2 and the PL2 connecting to the Moose Marauder. Wow. <laughs> oh, freaking wow. Oh, freaking wow. 
Oh, impressive. Impressive for sure. What more? What more? What more are we missing over here? What more are we missing over here? So, full breeze, still baiting more missiles, as we can see over there. Baiting missiles left and right. Do we have one more? One casualty I miss here? No. Um, this is the next kill. You can see here that, 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 that here, here, okay. You can see here that Electro Bull, 8.6 miles out, Fox 3 into Assassin. Assassin, very low, very, but still with a nice airspeed, but still fly, turns out cold way too late because he was trying to put that, that Fox 1 into play. But of course, Fox 1s do have less reach than Fox 3s, and therefore, uh, that's when you know you are in the fight split. Assassin that takes the kill here. Breeze still as per usual. Defending missiles left and right. Nothing new to see there. Nothing new to see. Gopnik Star takes out of the sky DC with this long range. Wait, 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 wait. computer, wait. No, wait, 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 wait. Here. It's coming at 30 angels. Angels 38, 1.5. Fox 3 into DC that did track and takes the, the casualty. And of course, that's not all, but Fox 2 into Electro Bull. The company star is really showcasing how well and Flaming Cliff, uh, a Flaming Cliff module as in F15 can be used. Because we can see that it's really being used to very good use today. Taking two enemy airplanes, one down with one swift, swift move, as you can see. And of course, now is where we saw that he went into the marriage with Greece. And I'm missing something else that I know. Praetorian. Yeah, Praetorian I think was the next casualty. Let me check. Or was it the first one? No. You can see that uh, Riker against Praetorian. Fox 1 from Riker. Fox 2 from Riker, of course. That field 2 goes to Riker, but still managed to be defended by the Fleurs. And the Fox 1 did connect. Of course, Electro Bull coming with the SD10 still from the back, trying to help out the friendlies. And now this is where we have the, the one on two situation over here. Where we had Breeze coming in hot, going for the match with Gopnik Star down to guns. And we can see, that even though he's down to guns, managed to take the, uh, the six of Gopnik Star, but Riker coming in hot from there. Sends a Fox 2 into your fray. We can see that this thing is very close by. It's, it's too close to, for comfort, but still managed to take down the Gopnik Star with the last missile from the entire team. And thus bringing home the victory for this team. But of course, that's not all. We still have to see them landing. And that's, when, that's, some, that's what we are going to be seeing right now. On camera, we are seeing right now. Uh, both Riker and Breeze coming in back home as they are almost approaching into Mothdog and once they land they will be declaring themselves the victors of this fight between ETF and SPQR. Massive and marvelous fight today. What a show. I mean guys, you can you really tell me these kind of fights and, and you tell me if I think and you think I'm wrong. But I do think that these fights are what really, really, really showcase what the what can be done in the tournament scenes altogether. And that's this is something I love seeing for sure. And hopefully we'll be seen more often than not with the rest of the uh, with the, the guys with the as much as possible. Uh, sorry, I'm because I have to do this. Um, do this. And do this. This, this, no, ah, my keyboard. No, keyboard is not working as intended right now. F2. Huh. Let me check. Why is my, my keyboard not working correct? F2. Not that. Come on. Having problem with the keyboard. Give me a sec, sorry guys. 
Okay, now it's working. No, now it's working as intended. No, not correctly, but still. So far, you can see that we are still ha we are having Breeze and Picard coming in hot. But Breeze and Riker coming in hot into the land into landing. Okay, finally, my my keyboard is working as intended. I still need to get a hold of how my keyboard works to really feel comfortable with it. But still... Let me try to... We can see already that Riker and Breeze do have visual with the runway. And now, of course, because we have so many cloud coverage over this area, we are going to be seeing them uh, doing for a long approach, being sure that they, ha they can maneuver around. And get up in the runway with a good positioning so no crashes whatsoever for them without any kind of problem so let me try to do this uh, this and this, and this okay cameras are ready huh Okay, now it's working. Sorry, I was getting camera ready for Breeze. I think going to be the first lining up to approach. You can see that they are still far away, getting ready to turn around and line up with the runway. Of course, because we have such a bad weather, you can see it on camera that we cannot almost see at all a Breeze on camera. So they are going to turn out around to do a long approach and be sure that they bring the airplanes down, home, without any kind of issue whatsoever. Guys, I mean, I'm very proud to see to say that I do think this fight between ETF and SPQR is going to be one of the best fights of this tournament. I really do think so, and I'm happy to be here doing the, the, the camera work for this fight. I do think that's going to be one of the best for sure. And I'm curious to know how well will be seen, how it's going to be played out on the rest of the fights. Of course, we are, to, uh, if I recall correctly, we are just in the last two weeks of the group stage. And thus, in not so long from now, we will be starting to see the, the participants of the group stage. And for sure, that will will be having a very hectic sh time for sure. This camera is not working as I wanted. A very hectic ca time for sure. Knowing and checking out who is going to be the victor of the tournament. So far, I mean, who do you think will win the tournament? Do you have any guesses, guys? Because we have a very good team co uh, committed into this tournament right now. And we have ETF, we have SPQR, we have In Sky, we have Tennis Festival. Uh, what are the top tops more? We have the 51st, of course. I need to check, I always forget the team names. I, I always forget my team names. Let me check. I do not recall right now, I cannot recall all the teams. But still. Uh, we have more teams uh, that do uh, that they are very good teams and I know that it's going to be a very hectic uh, time for sure during the, the last uh, the last moment of the tournament where we are having the 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 bracket stage where no network is being halved and we will be having a human GCI for all the fights that's something I, I'm very good to see how it's going to play out for sure you are seeing that uh, right now Briss been followed by Riker. They are both in final approach for most of with any without any, almost any visual at all. Okay, I can start to see the uh, Briss 17 far from far away. We can, we can see him now from far away, but still so freaking far away that we cannot almost see the runway itself. Three miles out to, to the runway, of course. 
we have tank and stations placed on the on the map, so they can use them as reference to lining up with the runways. So risk for final approach, and once they are down in the ground, okay, Riz draining some energy because he's a bit too fast still. Not still, he should be able to get that airplane down in the ground and under control in time. Still a bit too fast. Still that down in control, and once he managed to slow down that airplane, then we will be declaring the victory for round two, for this round two for ETF. Of course, I have talked with the teams, and we are going to have an interview with them. So, guys, be sure. Yeah, DS player. <laughs> <laughs> I'll t I will take that one any time of the week. <laughs> Fantastic missile out there. So guys, this is a victory for uh, for ETF from this round two. Get off, as mentioned, they give us a few minutes. Sorry, give us a few minutes while we get the teams on the on the comms ready to do the interview so stay tuned we'll be back in just one minute So guys, uh, now we are live today. We are having an interview with, to, from left to right, we have Riker. Please say hi, my good, crazy uh, British friend. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, Riker. Of course, me, myself, the director here on The Voice, not on the flight today. Next to me, Brit from ETF, please say hi. Hello there. And of course, to close it up, last but not least, as usually said, Territorian from SPQR. Hey guys. So first and foremost, congratulations from ETF for this fight. I can say for sure that this fight and more so round two was amazing. It was for me this round two was the most fun I've had doing any commentary work. It's so freaking hectic and so many ups and downs. Is it really? This round two, more so even than anything else, this round two. Okay, and now we have Aspen 2 on call, by the way, guys. So, hi, Aspen, please say hi. Hello. Hello. So, of course, I was saying, round two of this fight was lovely. I cannot say enough uh, how, how what's a roller coaster of experience we had in that round two. But we'll get to that. Rich, your microphone is doing strange noises. Thank you. Bye -bye. No worries. Uh, but I will get to round two afterwards. But first, let us concentrate round one. So first and foremost, uh, Praetorian, I want to ask you, how did you get into the idea of using 215s that high and fast? Because that's something that's not usually seen, and, and I love seeing for sure. What's the idea behind playing that airplane that high and that fast? Uh, Gopnik and Assassin, they both like it, and they both work really well together, and it's been working in our training, so we've went to that. It's been working well for us. 
Well, that's good enough for sure. <laughs> yes, but it, it, screws, it messes with your timing because I don't know about you guys, but I don't see a lot of people use it. So a lot of people aren't used to fighting it. And the, the speed they can generate on that 120 can really catch you out where there's been times fighting them where I think there's no way this is going to hit me and it still runs me down. It can catch you out. Yeah, yeah, the Eagle is a very formidable platform. Tor uses it quite frequently in Seitao, and they can really use that thing well as well. And that's what kind of originally opened our eyes up towards the Eagle, thinking, oh, it's not just a stupid FC free play. It's actually quite a, a big threat on the battlefield. Yeah, we've seen, of course, when you, once you get the tab used yourselves, you will be able to check it out. But we've seen that really, the F-15s in both rounds really put out lots of pressure and really put a very good fight. And that's something I love seeing. Different airplane that we are used to being employed at very well manner. Of course, uh, round two initially, we'll get to back to round two because I, that's going to be the most of it. I think that was the most interesting round I've seen in, a, in my entire career doing a commentary work for, for all tournaments. So yeah, I, can, I want to, to delve a bit more on that. But still, round one. Of course, uh, we saw initially a more standard approach from ETF going for the, for the notch at 60 miles out from the south. So that was nothing uh, unexpected. From, from a SPQR side, uh, of course, we saw more so in round one than in round two, sheer aggression. Just putting missiles down range as many as possible. I think I counted like five missiles from the start. And that's something very interesting to see because I want to know, and most of the viewers to know if it's possible, to, to really understand what's the thought process behind putting missiles downrange that many at airplane worth of Fox 3 missiles from the start. We wanted to get the ETF guys defensive and try to push them down low and have the Eagles come in right after that at real high altitude, high speed, and try to hit them as they're defending the shots from our grinder. Interesting. Of course, we've seen that uh, I still think that the missiles were a bit too far away to really uh, achieve what you want, wanted to suspect. Maybe from ETF you can mention something about that? Yeah, those airmoms are a problem. We couldn't run them. A lot of the guys, because of the hills, wanted to be a bit safe and not hit the hills. So they were like, you know what, I'm going to go cold for a little bit. Um, and the Eagle, as uh, he said, what did a bit of a problem there with the timeline. A lot fast, a lot more, a lot quicker than we expected and caught people off guard. They went cold thinking, I want to be safe from the hills. And yeah, the hills do add an extra dynamic to it because you can't really notch as securely in the hills as you can on flatland. So then you have to start doing tactics that so you may not be as comfortable doing because you're, say, used to notching per se. And then that's when the eagles really came in because we're um, defending in a way that is unfamiliar, or not unfamiliar, but not as optimal for us. And then with the pure kinematic power of the eagle coming in, it can really catch us off guard. Yeah, so that, that, you can see, guys, on, on, on chat, on the stream, of course, that, uh, of course, you can delve, you can ideate tactics and you can practice them all you want. But, of course, sometimes uh, the enemy, sorry, not sometimes, sorry, the enemy team also plays. And that means that many times we can see here, we have seen right now today, is the mind games. Okay, I expect you to do this and that, and this is what I want you to do, because if I do this, you are going to be this. And, of mm -hmm. course, if not, you can see that ETF knows, okay, we are going to do this and that and that. And that's something that is very beautiful for me to see in this kind of situation, this kind of tournament. Because you can see the thought process behind everything that is running and happening down below. That's something very beautiful. And of course, uh, I'm receiving a question here from round two. I think we should jump into round two already. Uh, of course, uh, I'm having a question from, from Mocha from 14th VFS. He's telling me to ask you guys about the 86 miles out missile that you did receive from ETF for ETF. How did it get you uh, out? How did you I feel about it? Too. We thought it was an AMRAM. Uh, no. Uh, uh, he, call, he called out defending an AMRAM. Not at all. Uh, we beamed. We beamed, and it's somehow still an active, apparently. So definitely like to see Tag on that. But from our perspective, we had already defended all the Phoenix threats, and then there were. More like, okay, cool, now it's Amram time. And so he was in that mindset of, okay, that probably an Amram. Just beamed that the Phoenix is still tracking. Yeah, because from of... our initial um, our scout report, we know that SPQR like to do the really long-range Phoenixes um, because that's it's worked very effectively for them in the past, so why wouldn't it now? And evidently, it did work very well for them today as well. 
Um, so we moved our beam back in our timeline to preemptively defend the um, the, uh, the long range Phoenix. And I think on round one, we did defeat a Phoenix with, um, with a preemptive beam quite early on because I saw on data link one actually flew past afterwards. So on going into the second round, we're like, okay, well, we've defeated their long range Phoenixes once doing this beam, we'll do it again. And um, unfortunately for Dormouse, that wasn't really the case. And um, he got smacked in the face by it. We did the same thing to defeat those initial finishes like we did in round one. I'd really like to see tag for you to see what, you know, we did the same thing. Why didn't it, the beam work this time? It's yeah. interesting to know. Yeah, of course, I, I did check the, I mean, even live, I was surprised because, of course, I did so you go through the notch uh, and it was doing everything correctly as per usual. But I did check that DS player managed to get still, managed to track the Phoenix from 86 miles out launch it out and managed to keep it on track at to the point where it did connect and it that's did connect amazing. very fast i mean that was a very good job from the s player i don't know if he's running with a rio though is he maybe i don't know for sure no yes that's probably why then isn't it <laughs> that's probably <laughs> why so no rios for any one of you guys that's that's the key play no, uh, the first round gator had a rio and the second round grug had the rio it didn't work round one though and it worked again on two adjuster. Yeah, Jester. Is, so if you have Jester, no, when you have Jester, it, it makes sense yeah. because all the all the radar stuff is rendered on like the client oh, or yeah, the process on the client. So so there's less latency to fuck up the Phoenix track. So you can get a much more stable lock with uh, with Jester than you can with a Rio, unless you both live in the same house. Yeah, there is a place for Jester in competitive, um, and it's obviously SPQR have figured out a way to use him correctly. Because I know a lot of people struggle utilizing Jester correctly, so good for you guys. <laughs> Learning how to use Jester very nicely because it yeah, can, DS is very good at that. Yeah, it can, well, obviously it's paid off, hasn't it? Um, because I always prefer having a human rear personally, so it's like the connection. But there is something to be said about having Jester if you want to go for long range shots, which is kind of what the Tomcat has to do now, really. Anyway, so it's um, an interesting point to make. Yeah, of course. Right now. Uh, DS players is saying saying that she'll have shot at both uh, at both of Durmaus and you Riker. So DS player wanted to take you both of them, both of you down <laughs> that encounter. <laughs> but I problem would yeah, have been a problem. problem. I mean, just for you to know, I did check because I was surprised. Riker, you did take the victory home with the last missile of ETF line <laughs> in that round two. <laughs> last missile on scene and taking the last. Kill, so I had that it's... guns. Two more seconds, like I would have been dead. I was really concerned about shooting that side one because all it was was this cloud. I all was, was in him. and I was like, mm, if I shoot now, am I going to kill Breeze? I'm down to guns and I have no fuel. Uh, this is not an optimum situation to be in. <laughs> yeah, the weather really messed us up in the first round. We had Gator go into a mountain because he couldn't see oh, anything. No. Oh, that's why. I didn't know because I did oh. check that one member from SPQR did go to the ground. Was like, what has happened? Maybe run out of fuel. But uh, no, he I... couldn't see nothing. He hit a mountain. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the the IMC conditions make it add a, an extra element of difficulty, which makes this this tournament format so much fun. It's yeah. a yeah, you 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 really have to know your your mar or your your distances because if you're gonna if you're gonna try and outrun something rather than notch or or decide to notch and get low, but you know, if you have the choice of running into a mountain in low visibility or running, you know, you want to make sure you're in the right position. Yeah, of course, this format of t uh, tournament, that's something I really do love, having more con more var variety on situations here, because that's not something that we are uh, usually seeing, we don't usually see. And so far, it's playing out very well. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's very standardized, uh, the maps in DCS. They're, they can try to make them as different as possible but it's two formats either it's hills or no hills that's like the weather nothing really played any through. factor at all it was just hills or no hills that's all that everyone wanted to know yeah distance didn't play a factor either everyone had fuel um so really standard map but these guys really changed it and really helped. yeah and adding weather adds an extra component because in every other competition this is like Bree said it's a, lot, it's a lot more important than it looks it's good for variety Okay, just for you to know, because I'm checking this score for my silence and such, and even my guys right now, on, or on team, my own team, DTW, is checking and commenting about the if, if, if DS player for three, if it is 86 miles out to kill. So 
it's, it's going to be a quite a ruckus for sure because uh, we all thought that so far with latest update uh, that Phoenix do not have enough reach so far and even uh, you have to be high in the air and such you can do something with them but still not be, not that uh, not that scary missile so far but seeing that they still have a played here a, 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 a place here to be played and used so that's going to be interesting yeah we honestly we didn't really think we'd hit them with that we thought like we'll shoot one to see what happens and it'll at least make them defensive maybe <laughs> well i think that's the whole point right it, whatever platform you choose just make it make it as lethal as as you possibly can and i thought spqr did a a, a great job today on utilizing the 15s and uh giving different looks that i don't i think uh there there could be some interesting stuff down the road that we'll see from them I say that was probably the best fight we've had in any competition, especially that second round. It felt like it could go either way, like right down to the end. That was a really good fight. Yeah, it was very fun. It came down to Cold War kind of things in the end as well. Fox 1s and Fox 2s, it was very fun. Yeah. It's got like the meta of only four Phoenixes that can bring the fun weapons. <laughs> yeah, even so, I mean, uh, we've seen, of course, situation where one, one time I saw one of the, the 15, one of the... But the 15s, uh, the Sag Eagles from, from SPQR, coming in hot, sending a Fox 1 missile long range, not, con not arriving because it was still a bit too far away, but still uh, take the kill because of that. And afterwards, we saw uh, you, Riker, it was you, Riker, who sent yes. a Fox 1 missile long range and managed to, uh, to defend. So that can we have more, way more variants of range for the missile because now we have a Fox 1, Fox 2, Fox 3 and makes things way more entertaining for sure to watch and see and be played for sure. Very fun to play as well. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I do remember, uh, by the way, Breeze, when you, uh, this round 2, Breeze, uh, you were the magnet for missiles. You know that already, don't you? Was I? Yes, uh, I th I could not I I trying to recall, but I think you received your way like eight missiles in the round two entirely. Damn, making really? up for that early death on round one, Breeze. Good job. <laughs> I, I, and that round one was so weird. I didn't know the Phoenix got shot down. I was still defending the Phoenix, so I went cold from the Amram tried to notch the Phoenix. I was like the timeline thing again, but I also wasn't too sure. I was like, eh, I'm gonna gonna. Hopefully, go call from the Amram and notch the Phoenix. But uh, I have a question for you, Deliberator. Did yeah. you see Breeze's preemptive release no. on round two? No. Preemptive release? No, I did not. <laughs> I, well, we have that on the stream, so I did not. I no, was not no, paying no. pay attention myself, but we that's I already recalled it. So Breeze. You've been noted there. I did nothing. I did nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, sure, no, sure, no, sure. No, yeah, no. Yeah, as yeah, soon yeah. as we took off, he nearly team killed Aspen with an SD10. No, yeah. no. Was, no. <laughs> He's just making sure that I, I was in check. He's exactly. just making, making, making sure. sure. Like, I, I do recall. He had his lights on and he wasn't turning them off, so I shot a missile at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did know. We I did saw that. I was like, uh, what the fuck there? <laughs> Freaking gosh. But still. I was arming my gun. <laughs> when that when um when Moose's Amram went for the PL five instead of the plane, man, that was bad. Like, oh no! Yes, uh, you, he doesn't boy. know yet. <laughs> but I was going to mention that now. So, Breeze, you got into a merch, okay, where you had you did kill one of the SPQR members with a Fox two missile PL two, okay, and it was like uh through two to three miles out Fox two, okay, mm -hmm. and you did you yeah two miles out Fox two you did, and you were shot three miles out Fox three, okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, what, maybe because you drop out so many flares and chaff and whatnot, or maybe because of sheer luck, or maybe because 120 is as stupid lately, uh, 120 decided to go for the PL2 instead of you. You do manage to defend the missile. 120 misses the PL2, and the PL2 did connect. What? Oh, so it did hit him. You okay. did take the kill, and you, were, you did survive because 120 went to the PL2. A three miles out. Are you sure it tracked him or well, like it wasn't in the lineup path or something? Like that tracked him? Yeah, you gotta, you you gotta love the radar, radar cross sections of these missiles. You gotta oh, love it's it. So silly. It's, 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 it's freaking it's stupid. stupid. It is really. What, it's a what, uh, I actually was going on the PL5 there. Uh, another one on the Eagle. One of, one of the Eagles. I shot a something. Uh, it looked like an Eagle and, and it didn't hit. It like came with them and. Give up on life or what? He didn't flare. It didn't look like he flared. 
what happened to uh, him? I don't recall, but you uh, you will get to sure. your tag soon enough. Yes, we'll get back to that reason. Yeah, you will get your tabbies for that little details. I wanted to point that out. Timeline, though, like the the PL fives and stuff, it felt like something was wrong with them. I think one more weird than usual. I've never seen an Amaran go after a PL five before, so it's something yeah. definitely up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <clears throat> but of course, what more? I mean, in chat, there's nothing so far. Uh, there's nothing so far about question for the interview, though. So I want to ask you guys, there's something first from ETF you want to say to SPQR and then from SPQR to ETF, and then we can close this up. Um, yeah, sure. Um, it was um, going into this match for us personally, we are, after seeing your, what was it, your 97 mile kill, I think it was against 420th. Yeah, yes. that's right. Uh, yeah, uh, that was crazy. Um, I feel really emasculated now because I think my, my best one was 80 back in the old days and I have it on my helmet so now that just seems worthless <laughs> so going into this um, we were knowing that the Tomcats were going to be really lethal despite the fact that everyone's crying wolf with the um, with how the Tomcat's useless you can't use it anymore and it, obviously you guys have gone to show that it's not the airframe it's the pilots You can if you can make an airframe work you can increase lethality and you guys really did increase your the fallacy of the airframe that's supposedly useless now. Um, so it's it's really good to see another team not abandoning um, a plane they fly and uh, continuing to fly it despite what the community says. And um, a lot of respect for that. From our side, like we, we fought you a bunch of times in scrims and other tournaments, and we know you're one of the hardest teams we've ever fought. So we've been trying to practice a lot and get our tactics down. And we actually didn't want to bring two 14s, but because of the availability of the guys we had, we did end up bringing two. But it worked out pretty good, and that was, like I said, probably the best fight that we've had. That was a real good fight from you guys. Thank you too, guys. Keep making them Tomcats work. <laughs> really, I really love seeing this kind of situation. Like. Hopefully we'll do it again in the finals. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, hopefully. I mean, I'm really looking forward to it because, as I mentioned, this fight is the best one I've, I've, uh, I have streamed so far since I started doing any commentary work for CCS. So uh, Jelly, I, how many people move out of the groups for each group? Two or one? I don't recall. I don't know. Top two from each group advance. Top two? Oh, two, I'm sorry. Then... Right now, SPQR is tied with, uh, with in Sky, no, sorry, the other team, the Chinese festival team. So, they're very nice guys. And we if, fight them next week. Then the guys. winner of that fight is going to be the one advancing. Uh -huh. Huh. It's going to be an interesting fight for sure. Yeah. Well, we, we certainly appreciate it. such a good fight today and, and wish you guys the best on the next match. Absolutely. Same to you guys, man. Great fight. Yep. Well, guys, of course, thank you all for joining me for this interview. I do know mm -hmm. that, of course, we this is a very good opportunity for the viewers to get to know you guys, get to know what goes behind the the thought process uh, in your heads while you are playing. And hopefully, the guys on the screen are, have enjoyed today's fight. Even we had a few problems today with me <laughs> starting the stream uh, incorrectly, <laughs> not starting <laughs> the stream, uh, not using the correct skins, fixing the skins, etc., etc. But still. Uh, things, uh, too many problems today, but still things have been solved. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed today's uh, fight between ETF and SPQR. And hopefully we'll be meeting each other tomorrow. And of course, I do think that the Brexit is still doing the, the other fight right now, isn't it? Maybe. Let me check. Uh, I'm sure. No, it's not. It's... Okay, as, uh, we have another fight today. It hasn't started yet? I don't know. I, I don't think so. Let me check, because if not, I wanted to write him. But if he's not still flying yeah. around... I don't think he's on. No, he's not on yet. Still, it seems that we don't have... A, we cannot write this in team right now. But nevertheless, let me do a recap of today's fights. We, for today, we have... Uh... Oh, sorry. Uh, Tactician Luftwaffen Geschwader. Uh, against uh, six on sixty against in sky was played at uh, fifteen two was played way before so oh so forget about oh. what I've said I forgot I th today I'm missing that I having problems today with, uh, with the date so uh, today there is no more fights today but still tomorrow we have two fights at twenty Zulu which are Alamo against New Zealand and Australia being covered by Breakshot 
who you can uh, check here let's say uh, shout out 51st rack shot rack shot here of course and of course well, i'll be, be covering here uh, 107 against 36 also at 22 so guys hopefully we'll meet each other tomorrow and if not have a nice weekend nice and see you next week absolutely adios adios We'll find all of you.